Thank you very much. Uh, and I want to start by uh, thanking Barcelona and congratulating the city for this initiative, uh, a close talk and cooperation of cities that are growing fast in terms of tourism. I think we have experienced during yesterday and this morning that we uh, all uh, value information, the sharing, and although the scale is different, uh, a lot of the problems are we have in common. And uh, that is also true for small Reykjavik up in Iceland, in the north. Why is tourism growing so fast? Uh, in short, uh, Reykjavik, or the Keplavik airport, is uh, surprisingly enough a transportation hub linking uh, Canada and the US on one side and Europe on the other. So we have about 30 direct flights every day from Europe to the airport and to 27 destinations in the US and Canada. So you can, in each and every of these cities, uh, fly um, to the US or Canada with a short stopover in Iceland. But free of charge, you can also stop in Iceland and Reykjavik. And that is what a lot of people have been doing, uh, at least uh, these last years, probably because of two things. Two bad publicity stunts. One was the economic breakdown of Iceland in 2008, and the other was a volcanic eruption uh, in Eyjafjallajökull that stopped all flights over Europe and the world for almost a week. Uh, because of those two events, Iceland headlined news all over the world, and uh, if there's something worse than bad publicity, it's probably no publicity. So we use that name recognition to market Iceland and market Reykjavik. And uh, with the result that tourism have, has been growing uh, by 20%, not in the last five years, but each year, the last five years, uh, 2016, we are growing by 32% and are predicted to grow by 34% next year. This is exponential growth. It's too fast. It's very difficult to manage it. But because uh, the number of people that go through the airport is much, much higher than the number of tourists it's also difficult to control. Uh, what are the exact numbers? Uh, the number of tourists in Reykjavik this year is almost exactly the same as the number of tourists to Barcelona in 1990. We learned that number uh, yesterday, that was 1.7 million. Barcelona is now up to 17 million and 600,000. Uh, we are now at the current level in uh, 1.7 million, 2016. Uh, the number of overstay nights are around 3 million. Uh, next year, we are predicting uh, the number of tourists to be 2.4 million already. So the addition next year will be almost the exact number of the total number of tourists in 2013. That was yesterday. So you can imagine that this uh, has effects. Uh, one of the good effects you can see on this chart over here, this is uh, economic growth, GDP per capita. Uh, it has been growing in Iceland. This is from 1998. This is the economic meltdown, and now it's growing again uh, to a large extent because of tourism. So fundamentally, 
we have used tourism to create jobs. We went from 11% unemployment under 3% where we are now, and we desperately need more people to work in Iceland. So please, if you're looking for a job, keep us in mind. Uh, this has not only been good for the tourist industry, but also for the building industry. We have been going from uh, adding no hotel rooms to 550 that started uh, last year. These are very meager predictions because the numbers will be higher. Uh, the, these are just projects that are already in place. Uh, and here you see in a picture of the center of Reykjavik, the green dots are where hotels are being built currently. Uh, and this is the exponential growth over there of uh, 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 nights. Uh, so what are we doing about it? Uh, we have had uh, old laws in place, only uh, redone this year. So we are trying to grasp, grasp the uh, problems as we go along. Uh, that will uh, make it easier for us to try to steer the vac vacational rentals more. But our main tools are through urban planning. We have in place a master plan uh, that defines where we can have new hotels and guest houses. Uh, we are protecting the harbor area and we have put in place hotel quotas uh, in the old center. So we designed the core center where everybody wanted to build a hotel and said, okay, we know about these projects that are aimed for, but here we say stop. In a defined specific area, uh, not more than 23% of all built square meters can be hotels. We are now studying, uh, because this is down here in the center, we are now studying this part of the city and want to implement or put in quotas there as well. Probably a lower number though, because there we have also retail and a lot of apartments. Uh, but in the master plan for the whole city, we are defining the residential areas as uh, no hotel areas, with the exception that main streets within neighborhoods can have uh, hotels in specific categories and the neighborhood centers. Uh, what does this mean? Does this mean that uh, residents can't have, uh, residential areas can't have Airbnb? No, it doesn't mean that. But uh, the rentals there are limited to 90 days. As we have learned, many cities have uh, a limited number of days. But not more than that, and, and uh, no uh, guest houses. Will it be easy to enforce this? Uh, no, probably not. So we have to learn from other cities how people are enforcing their rules, because this is our main tool to try to keep uh, the housing market uh, better, because we have seen uh, a rise in rental prices. We have seen uh, the lowering of number of rental apartments, uh, but it's up to a question of if the perceived motor, a lot of people in the city blame this on the tourism boom, but it can also be because wages are getting higher very fast, and uh, a lot of people, of course, want to live uh, downtown. Uh, uh, I want to go back one slide. 
Back. Thank you. Again, back. Yes. Uh, because what's interesting is although we have had this uh, hotel boom and tourist boom, we see that the population within the old city is kind of stable. It's not stable in all age groups. We see that the youngest kids are... Uh, the number of them are, is, is going down a bit. And uh, we're going down also in the age group 17 to 24 and 25 to 34. So older people are moving in, some younger people are moving uh, someplace else. And uh, people that were very eager to have more kids uh, as a consequence of the economic meltdown, that's the baby boom from the economic crash. Uh, but then they stopped when they got more money to do other things. Uh, and we want to keep this picture as it is. Uh, and we are uh, densifying uh, areas close to the city center and densifying the city. So that is part of the picture that the number of apartments is growing, uh, although the number of in the population is not necessarily growing. Uh, and here you have a picture. Uh, here I, I have zoomed in on the uh, city center, and you see that the area where all the hotel investors wanted to go is fairly small. And now we're studying a broader area where we are putting uh, quotas in place. So uh, our basic tool is through public, uh, through planning, through urban planning. Uh, we are not very good in uh, applying to rules in general in Iceland. Uh, and the city of Reykjavik could be much better in enforcing rules. I think we for example, can learn a lot from Amsterdam in that. Uh, we have no agreement with the platforms. Uh, we want to study that further. We uh, have also uh, written down a lot of ideas from other cities uh, during uh, yesterday and this morning that we want to study further. And I just want to end this by saying that I think this initiative is not only good, it is uh, needed. Uh, we have to learn and learn fast. And we also have to learn how we are doing in imp implementing the things, rules and standards that we want to have flourishing tourism, uh, a healthy housing market and livable cities. Thank you very much.